My introduction to this video was going to talk about how August is like the last month of summer and this is going to be my final summer TBR but honestly like as I look out the window and the dark grey clouds roll past we haven't had a single month of summer yet in the UK and I don't have any hope that August is going to be the one for us. I think it's going to be September but traditionally August would be the end of summer and this is my final summer TBR that actually does not reflect the season in any way shape or form. <laughs> But in August, I have nine books that I'm aiming to read. The books that I end up reading will probably be a little different to the ones that I'm showing you today. But this is all of my book club stuff, all of my library books, my required reads, the arcs, that kind of thing. I will, of course, be reading other books outside of this for things like Shelf It or Scrap It. But I actually feel like I'm doing well. Like the books that I end up reading are not all of the books on my TBR, but I feel like we're getting through a decent percentage. So I think I deserve a little bit of credit. Two of the books that we're going to be talking about today or maybe three potentially are rolling over from July's TBR and then we have six books that are new for this one. In the month of August I am going to be co-hosting a readathon as well which is the Battleathon created by Mel from Mel and All Reads. I will put Mel's announcement video down in my description box in case you want to join us which I totally think you should and this readathon is based on a assassin tournament who are all competing to win the king's favour so there are four houses that you can choose from but I suggest that you choose the House of Snakes because along with Lexi from Books with Lexi that is the house that I am going to be representing. So the way that you score points for this readathon is based on the star ratings that you give so the higher your rating the more points you generate for your team which I mean if you know how few five stars I give out at the minute it's a little bit daunting and it might be a recipe for disaster but we're going to work with what we can and you can also gain bonus points for your team by reading books that have certain words in the title depending on which team you're on and for the house of snakes that is books that have wicked words in the title so things like death and blood and bone and skulls and all of that beautiful gothy stuff that we love over here on this channel and of course with a public readathon comes reading sprints so I will be hosting at least a couple of rounds of sprints on my channel during the month of August alongside all of the ones that I always do over on Patreon. So aside from the readathon in August I'm going to be away for a couple of days visiting friends in the UK and aside from that it's just chilling reading, vibing, you know, the usual. Without any more introduction. Was that necessary? <laughs> So without any further introduction, let us get into the books that I'm aiming to read in August, starting off with those dreaded book clubs. Not all of them are dreaded, just some of them. And the first one is going to be a struggle bus as usual because it is the month of Wheel of Time along. Now, I am pre-filming this a little bit, but by the time we actually roll into August, I am hoping that I won't have much of this book left because the live show for Crossroads of Twilight by Robert Jordan is going to be very early in the month on the 4th of August. So this one is book 10 in the Wheel of Time series which as I'm sure you all know by now is a very well-loved epic fantasy series that follows the struggle between the forces of dark and light. We are especially following this generation's Dragon Reborn who is somebody who has a great influence on whether the forces of dark or light prevail in any given age and along with him there are a handful of Tarverin who are the only people who have the ability to alter the pattern of the weave and change the course of the future for ages to come. So this is is the end of the slog and I am here for it. I am ready to get back into the good stuff with this series because the last couple of books have truly been a drag. Now as I said I am pre-filming this slightly so I'm currently just over 200 pages into it um, but with the live show being on the 4th of August before we roll into August I want to be on like at least page I want to say like 500, 550 because I will essentially just be finishing it up in preparation for the live show. I am listening to the audio of this but I'm paying a little bit more attention to the text than I have when reading the previous books because with all of these side characters that we have going on here I'm getting just like a little bit lost and I want to get myself back on track ready for like the next books in the series where things pick up a little bit more again. The next one is one that I should not typically, I wouldn't usually be reading it in in this month but the live show in September is going to fall a little bit earlier than usual and that is The Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Abercrombie. So this is the 
final book for this round of Catch Up Book Club. It's the final book for First Laura Long and the live show for this is going to be on my channel on the 1st of September. So obviously like I got to read this one in August. As well as being the final First Law book, this is the final book in the Age of Madness trilogy. Joe Abercrombie writes grimdark fantasy. When we say grimdark, normally people associate that with gore. And while these are a little bit gory, the grim elements of this series kind of fall more into the hopelessness and the futility of a lot of like the actions of the characters. So the main themes of the Age of Madness trilogy is that all of the countries are going to war again. The royalty are struggling to maintain peace. And then on top of that, the workers are instigating a workers revolution is also going to try and overturn the nobility. So we're going to see the climax of that in the wisdom of crowds. I loved a little hatred. I gave it five stars. I loved the trouble with peace. I gave it like a four or 4.5. And I'm really hoping that Joe Abercrombie really brings this series to a good finish. I don't know if I have a lot of hope because like I said, the main themes of this series are like hopelessness, which is reflected in like the cyclical nature of some of the character arcs and the futility of some of the characters actions. But I have really, really enjoyed this final trilogy and I'm excited to see it to its end. And if you guys are interested in what Catch Up Book Club are going to be tackling next, the announcement for that is going to be coming in September. So keep your eyes peeled. Moving on to my Patreon book clubs and things that I have going on. The first one is one that I don't necessarily have to read in August, but if I get to it, that would be great. And that is Mother of Death and Dawn by Carissa Broadbent, which has a wicked word in the title with death. So this one is for my Patreon book club, which is the Alpha Ho book club. It is a fantasy romance equivalent of Catch Up Book Club where we read entire series. And this one is the final book in the War of Lost Hearts series. So it is a chunky one. It's over like 700 pages. And because it's a chunky one, I have both August and September to read it. But this one is a series following a young woman who is a slave and she manages to free herself from slavery. So she goes to a neighboring kingdom where there is an order of magic wielders and she asks them if she can join. They say that the only way that she can join is if she has an apprenticeship and the only person currently available to take an apprentice is a reclusive fire wielder called Max. So the reason why she actually wants to join this society is because she would like to free her best friend from slavery that she had to leave behind. And she's obviously come from this awful society that condones slavery and assumes that the order of magicians are a little bit better. But as we progress through the first book, we kind of realize that while they are maybe technically better than the place where she's come from, they're not the great doers of good that she imagined that they were to start off with. Also for my Patreon things that I have going on is my very unofficial, very casual read along of the Pretty Little Liars series by Sarah Shepard. In August, we're gonna be reading book six, which is Killer, which I would also count as a wicked word in the title. And this one, I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it. We all know it is a YA mystery series about a group of girls that are being blackmailed and they're banding together to get to the bottom of who is responsible while terrible things are happening to them. And there's all of this like drama and stuff in their life as well, which this anonymous blackmailer is threatening to unveil. I am actually not expecting to love this one because I have noticed so far that I really like the odd numbered books in the series and the even ones a little bit less. It's a weird pattern. I can't even put my finger on why I enjoy the even numbered ones a little bit less. But as this is book six, I'm a little bit dubious. <laughs> For my Inner Circle Patreon picks, I am going to be rolling over the July one, which is Fantasy Lover by Sherilyn Kenyon. So this one is the first book in a very long paranormal romance series. I don't know the direction of the series as a whole, but I do know that every book follows a new couple. And this one in particular is following a girl who summons a Greek god. So he's once a proud Spartan general. He's now a love slave, but she accidentally summons him. He's been imprisoned by his brother and she realizes that if she dismisses him, then that will affect her sanity. And so she has to find a way to free him from his brother's hold for good. I'm a little bit nervous about this one because I don't typically love paranormal romance, especially ones that are like such long series that follow different couples. But I am really intrigued about the like ancient Greek influence on this one. And that leads us to our August Inner Circle Patreon pick. So if you are unfamiliar with this little jar, every member of my Inner Circle tier on Patreon can recommend a book that goes into here. Every month I pull one out and I read it in like the couple of months that follow. We have just had a little bit of a refill on this. So it has a lot in it. 
and I'm intrigued. I'm actually really excited about some of the things that just went in here. So let's see what our August book is gonna be. Let's dig a bit. Go for this one. Okay, so this one is purple, which means that it was added last year. <gasps> is this Ashes? Okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Ash sent me a little challenge on her slip. It says, if I'm wearing dark clothes to read A Kiss of Iron by Claire Sega, but if I'm reading light clothes to read A Touch of Light by Thiago Abdalla. Now, I am... I am, I'm wearing both because you guys can see I'm wearing a dark jumper, but I'm also wearing white sweatpants, which I was hoping not to have to reveal. That's the beauty of filming. You only see me from like the top up. Does this mean I get to choose? Are my legs longer than the top of my body? <laughs> How do we work this out? Okay, so I was tempted to get Curtis down and pull him away from his work to measure me, <laughs> but I actually, think that because all you guys can see is that I'm wearing dark clothes even though I am also wearing white sweatpants I think we're gonna go with A Kiss of Iron by Claire Sager for this one let me get up the synopsis for this I'm actually gonna check is it on Kindle Unlimited it is on Kindle Unlimited which is very very helpful this one I'm pretty sure is on my rare TBR so it is on my radar but it is about a girl who is a penniless noble woman on the verge of losing everything when she is given a well-paid job that could be her salvation so she is drawn into the court where she is asked to spy on a powerful fey lord known as the Night Queen Shadow. I already feel like I'm going to enjoy this. It says Bastian Marwood is handsome, ruthless and cunning, but Kat can't decide if he's a threat to her kingdom or her heart. Sounds actually like something that I'm really going to enjoy and fingers crossed I do because then I can get a physical copy to take to Ra and be signed. I do have an arc that I would like to get to in August as well, which is Goss by Sam K. Horton. I'm pretty sure that this one is a debut that has been sent to me by Solaris so thank you very much to Solaris for that but this one is following one of my favorite themes in fantasy like it's a little bit of a niche that I really like and that is historical fantasy that is set at the time where religion usually Christianity was coming and like eradicating folklore in all of the countries like especially across Europe that that happened. This one in particular is set in the UK it's set in Cornwall and it is following is it like a preacher he's called the keeper who is the mediator between the worlds of men and fae and on the flip side of that we have reverend cleaver who is going to be like the representative of christianity in this one but then we also have a character called nancy Bly who has the sight and is determined to maintain the balance between the fae and the human world i don't know why that particular subject really interests me but it's the same kind of thing that is in The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden which I love and also The Pomegranate Gate by Ariel Kaplan which is a book I read last year that I really loved and would definitely recommend. So I'm hoping that this one as it follows that similar theme is going to be something that I really enjoy. For my library books aside from the two that I've already mentioned which is Fantasy Lover and The Crossroads of Twilight everything else that I had out from the library has now gone back because they all had whole on them so I have either read them in July which you will find out in either my vlogs or my July wrap up or I had to return them unread. So the only thing that I currently have out or that I'm about to have out, it is currently in transit, is Gold by Raven Kennedy, which I did briefly mention in my July TBR because essentially I ordered this for purchase at the library. They said that they had ordered it and put a reservation down and then the book wasn't there. So then I emailed them and was like, where is the book? And they said, we've just ordered it. So I think that they made a mistake the first time and didn't order it. And then when I emailed them the second time, they did. But anyway, the book is now in transit. It's on its way to my library. So I'm gonna be picking it up very soon. This one is book five in the Pleated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy, which is a fantasy romance series that is a retelling of the King Midas myth following a girl called Auron who has has been she hasn't been imprisoned by King Midas technically but she does live in a cage in his palace of her own volition because she had horrible things done to her when she lived on the streets when she was younger up until she found Midas and this cage offers her a sense of security that she has never had in her life she's also in love with Midas and Midas is hungry for some more territory so he is moving all of his prized possessions including Auron to this new kingdom that he's 
planning to take over and on the way she is attacked by raiders and kidnapped which forces her to come into her own and stand on her own two feet for the first time in a really long time time really excited to get into book five i've recently read book four and the cliffhanger was insane so i'm definitely expecting good things from book five and then i'm also going to ask my library to order book six when that comes out which i think is that august it may very well be and then the last two things i have to add are just things that i want to read things that i will read if i get around to them if i manage to finish i mean i have to finish the crossroads of twilight before the 4th of august so after that my next audiobook is going to be waking gods by sylvain nouvelle which i did mention on my july tbr as something i wanted to get to if i managed to finish the crossroads of twilight which i didn't <laughs> but this one is the second book in the themis files it is an adult sci-fi series that is told in in transcript format so I definitely recommend listening to the audio of this because it's full cast but essentially a massive robot hand was found and so a group of like the highest ranking military and engineers and scientists have been assembled to find all of the pieces of this robot put it back together and find out what its purpose is and how it ended up on earth and then the last one that i would tentatively like to put on here is words of radiance part one by brandon sanderson we all know i'm trying to catch up with the cosmia by rereading the first three stormlight books and then reading rhythm of war then miss born era two book four before book five in Stormlight comes out, which is, is that December or January? I can't remember. I have really been struggling to start my reread of Way of Kings. I'm currently pre-filming this before I go on holiday and the only physical book I'm taking with me is Way of Kings. So I'm hoping that by the time I get home, which is at the very, very end of July, that I will have finished that and that I can tentatively, maybe potentially move in to Words of Radiance part one in August. So this one is a very epic, <laughs> high fantasy series following a group of people who are all associated in some way with a war. So the war is between the humans and the Parshendi because the Parshendi have valuable resources that the humans need. They do assemble a peace treaty and all is kind of going well until the Parshendi assassinate the king of the humans. So then war is inevitable and we are one of our main characters is the general of the army who was the king's brother who is leading this war with the Parshendi. We also follow one of the slaves of the human army. We follow a scholar who is the assistant to the niece of the general and all like kind of perspectives like that. This book is actually about like legendary knights and magic swords and stuff, but that doesn't really come in at the beginning. Like the setup is like quite mundane martial fantasy and the fantastical elements grow as the main characters themselves learn a little bit more about them. One of my favorite series ever. Really excited for my reread of this it's just not a massive priority in comparison to like book clubs and read-alongs and stuff so it has taken me a while to get back into it but I'm so excited to be back in this world so when I was putting this TBR together I was like oh I should add more this actually like it isn't really very much this is quite a hefty TBR we do have to add the wisdom of crowds which I don't own mother of death and dawn and a kiss a kiss of iron I think it was called that I'm going to be reading on KU as well as gold which I need to pick up from the library so I have a lot of reading ahead of me luckily I'm currently in a mood where I'm very excited to read and I'm hoping that I will have plenty of time to do so in August so do remember to join Battleathon if you are interested in joining me in racking up some more points for the house of snakes shelve it or scrap it for august is going to be filmed right at the beginning of the month so it is going to be in your subscription box in the like middle to end of the month so do stay tuned for that if you are at all interested down in my comments please let me know what book you are the most excited to get to in august and if you guys would like to leave me a little comment to let me know you were here but you don't feel like you have anything to say then you can leave me something red for the stormlight archive or is it yeah it's red i was gonna say is it orange it's not it's definitely red <laughs> but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna if you head to my description box you'll find links to my goodreads in Instagram and Patreon if you'd like to join me on any of those. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go when nobody knows. With guns in under our petty coats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.